Welcome to the CXC Cape Pure Mathematics Pure 1 Pass Paper 2019. This is Paper 2. Alright. So it's a 2019 Pass Paper, Paper 2, and the topics are Algebra, Geometry, and Calculus. Let's get right into it. Now, Module 1 has two sections, and both questions are compulsory, so we must answer both questions. We're going to start by reading the first question that says the quadratic expression f of x equal ax squared plus 12x plus b is divisible by x minus 3. In other words, x minus 3 is a factor of this expression and has a remainder of negative 27 when divided by x plus 6. So you have a remainder here. So we're thinking about factor and remainder theorem. Show that the values of the constant a and b are 3 and negative 63 respectively. Alright, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, if x minus 3 is a factor, we're going to start by saying let x minus 3 equal to 0. x would be equal to 3. So, that implies that x is equal to 3. Now, since x minus 3 is a factor, f of negative 3 would be equal to 0. Which means when I plug negative 3, well, this would be positive 3 when I transpose it, not negative 3. So, it means that when I plug positive 3 into the expression, I should get 0. So I'm going to have a times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 plus b is equal to 0. I'll quickly just map this out. And this is going to give me 9a plus 3 twelve is 36 plus b is equal to 0. So we can say 9a plus b is equal to negative 36. And we can call that equation 1, for example. All right. Let's see what happens with the second one. I'm going to also say let x plus 6 equal to 0, which would imply that x is equal to negative 6. But the difference this time is that I'm getting a remainder. So f of negative 6 would be equal to the remainder, which is negative 27. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to have a times negative 6 squared plus 12 times negative 6 plus b is equal to negative 27. All right, and of course, we're going to simplify this as well. So we know that negative 6 squared is 36. So we have 36a, 6 times 12, well, 12 times negative 6 is negative 72, plus b is equal to negative 27. All right, let me just scroll this down. So we're going to scroll down a bit. Now, if I bring this over, if I bring over the 72, it's going to be 72 plus negative 27. All right, so you don't have to show all the steps there. We're just going to have 36a plus b is equal to negative 27 plus 72 is going to give me 45. And of course, this is equation 2. Now, we have the two equations that we want to solve. So what we can do is that we can line them up and use the elimination method. All right, so let's go. The first equation was that, or I can just put it underneath this one to say 9a plus b is equal to negative 36. It's equation 1. All right, we don't need to multiply by anything. We just simply need to go ahead and subtract. So I'm going to have 36a minus 9a, that's 27a. And of course, then you're going to have 45 minus negative 36. That is going to give me 81. Now, to get A, we simply divide both sides by 27. 27. So, of course, A is going to be equal to 3. All right, so we have the answer for A. That part is taken care of. Now, let's go back up and use one of the simplest equations to find my B. The simpler equation, of course, seems to be equation 1. All right, so let's go. So, we can sub A equal 3 in equation 1. Now, equation 1 was 9a plus b equal to negative 36. So, I'm going to have 9 times 3 plus b equal negative 36. Now, 3 nines is 27 plus b equal negative 36. So, b is equal to negative 36 minus 27. b is equal to negative 63. 
No, it was a proof question. So I can go ahead and say, therefore, A is equal to 3 and B is equal to negative 63 QED, which means that which has been proven. So you have proven the question to be true. All right? Very important there. Now, let's take this down a notch now. Hence, determine the factors of F. So, what it means is that I'm going to have to go back to the expression and put in the values that I just got. A is 3 and B is negative 63. Okay, let's go. So, I'm going to have F of X equal 3X squared plus 12X now well, minus 63. Now, you have two options. You can choose to factorize this as is. Or you already have one factor, right? So since you have one factor already, you can probably do a little div long division. So you have x minus 3, which is a factor. So if I want, I could just go ahead. x minus 3 into 3x squared plus 12x minus 63. Alright, x into 3x squared would have been... 3x. Now, 3x times this would give me 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is going to give me minus 9x, and we subtract, right? So, I'm going to have 12 minus negative 9. That is just like adding. So, that is now going to give me 12. It's like saying 12 plus 9 because they have two minus signs in the middle, all right? That is going to give me 21. So I'm going to have 21x, and I'm going to carry down to minus 63. Now, x into 21x would give me 21. And that's going to be a positive 21. And 21 times all of this would give me 21x minus 63. Now, I know that my answers are correct. My answer is correct because the remainder is 0. So therefore, the factors of f are x minus 3 and 3x plus 21. Now, you might be asking me, why didn't I write it as x minus 3 times 3x plus 21? Because it didn't say factorize. It says determine the factors of f of x. So I put a comma in between it. Now, is that the only way I could have done it? No. There's a second way I could have done this question. All right? It's quadratic. All right? So I could say that 3x squared plus 12x minus 63 since I know one of the factors already, I could say that this is equivalent to x minus 3. And then, of course, the other factor is also linear. So you can call it probably ax plus b. Or I could call it px plus q. Because this a right here, let me change that. Because I don't want you to think it's the same a and b that is inside of the original question. I'm going to call it px plus q. So I'm going to go ahead there and say px plus q. Good. Now, working this out pretty much is straightforward. Well, this is 63, sorry. Let me put this here. This was 63. All right. Now, the first term is obtained when you multiply the first two terms in the expression. So, I know that the coefficient of x squared, which is 3, is going to be equivalent to the coefficient of x squared over here, which is obtained when I multiply x and px. Now, when I multiply those two, I'm going to get px squared, which would mean that p is equal to 3. So, I'm using comparison now. Use comparison. And of coefficients. And this, of course, is way easier because guess what's going to happen now? I know that the only time I get a constant in a quadratic is when I multiply the two constants in the bracket. So, the constant on the left is negative 63. On the right, it's going to be negative 3 times q. So, minus 3q. Now, to find q, we divide both sides by minus 3. So, q would be equal to 21. So, you see how quick? We didn't have to go through this entire process of doing long division. We could have used comparison. And that is why this method is very useful in doing all aspects of maths. A comparative approach. Very powerful method. Alright. With that said, without further ado, we take it down to the next question. Which says, solve for the real values of x, the inequality modulus 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 6. Now, clearly here, the modulus means the absolute value. 
Now, if you understand the whole concept of the number line, you understand that when you mod the negative and you mod the, neg the positive values, you get the same value because we're talking about the distance and not necessarily the direction. All right? So for the values, for whatever in here, for the modulus of whatever is in here to be less than 6. So this is negative 6. This is 6. So anything that I mod inside here, the absolute value is going to be less than 6. So what it means is that 3x minus 4 has to either be greater than or equal to negative 6 or less than or equal to positive 6. That is what it means. Now, if this is true, and of course I can solve this inequality from inside, so I'm going to have 3x is greater than or equal to negative 6 plus 4, but less than or equal to positive 6 plus 4. So 3x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 10. All right, and I'm going to divide everything by 3, by 3, by 3, by 3. So x must be greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds, but less than or equal to 10 thirds, or 10 over 3. All right? This is probably one of the easiest inequalities you can get quickly. And then there's four marks, which means you have four minutes. You don't need more than one. All right? Pretty straightforward question. Going down. A binary operation is defined on the set of rational numbers as a asterisk b equal and of course you must know your types of numbers you see how much they are coming up rational numbers those numbers that can be expressed as fractions okay let's get right into it now prove that it's commutative now the question you'd have known commutative problem from probably about grade 7 or 8 or way before that all right it's just that this is a definite sign it's a binary operator just like how addition is binary 5 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 5. The asterisk here is what you want to make it. Make it. So I'm going to have to say what? If commutative, all right? If commutative, then a asterisk b must be equal to b asterisk a. Now, a asterisk b, we know already, a asterisk b, based on this question, is a, b, all over 2. Now I want b asterisk a. Now what b asterisk a means is that based on your official, well, based on your initial definition of the asterisk, where whatever is in the position of a is now b, and what is in the position of b is now a. So on the right, wherever I see a, I'm going to have to put b, and wherever I see b, I'm going to have to put a. So this is going to be equal to b a over 2. But we all know by the commutative property, b a over 2 is the same thing as saying a b over 2. Of course, again, by the commutative law of multiplication. Right? So this therefore implies that a asterisk b is equal to b asterisk a. And hence, the asterisk is commutative. All right? Don't watch the writing. So that, that's the whole concept about it. A asterisk B must be equal to B asterisk A. And then if you never, even if you never knew it, you can use the same thing as context clause, just like what you do with addition or you do with multiplication. All right. Now, use mathematical induction to prove that 5 to the n minus 1 is divisible by Q, where n is a natural number. All right. This one is not so difficult. We're going to start by proving... Proof true for n equal to 1. That's where we're going to start. So we know that 5 to the 1 minus 1. So in the place of n, I'm going to put a 1. So 5 to the 1 minus 1 should be equal to 4 times a, where a is some integer. All right? Now, 5 to the 1 minus 1 is going to give me 5 minus 1, which is 4. Now, of course, we know that 4 can be written as 4 times 1. So it's true for n equal to 1. All right, we're going to assume true for n equal k. All right, so I'm going to have 5 to the k minus 1 should be equivalent to 4 times a. All right, so we assume that this is true. 
And then I'm going to have to prove for n equal k plus 1. And we're going to have 5 in the place of n. We're going to have k plus 1 minus 1. So the whole idea of induction is to prove that it works for all possible natural numbers n. Okay. Now, let us see how I can incorporate. Because this is the important step now. We assume that this is true. So I want to know how we can incorporate this to prove this. Okay. Now, 5 to the k plus 1 can be written as 5 times 5 to the k minus 1. Now, from down here, we could probably go back and say that 5 to the k is equal to 4a plus 1. So wherever I have 5 to the k here, I'm going to incorporate this from the assumption statement, which is 4a plus 1. So this becomes 5 bracket 4a plus 1 minus 1. Okay, this is going to give me 20a plus 5 minus 1, which is equal to 20a plus 4. Now, bear in mind what you want to do. You want to prove it's divisible by 4, which means that you should be able to factor out a 4. So you're going to have 4. You're going to have 5a plus 1, which you could let 5a plus 1 equal p. Right, where p is some integer or some natural number. All right, so this becomes 4p. Now, once it's once you can factor out a 4, and once you can show it's 4 times something, then you know, of course, it must be divisible by 4. Just like how 8 is 4 times 2, that is what makes 8 divisible by 2. So, once you have that now, we have to do our concluding statement, which is proven true for n equal 1, n equal k, n equal k plus 1, and hence, for all elements in the natural number system. All right? That's where we stop that right there. So, this will have given you, well, we had a lot of space, 8 marks. This was indeed a pretty easy paper, a pretty easy year. That's 8 total marks, 8 full marks. So, this would have been the first question because now we're at our 25 marks limit. And of course, each question in each module is 25 marks. All right.